Hi, it's Art Gelwix over at Gelwix Tech. I've been seeing a lot of questions as of late around using groups and subgroups within Notion. So I figured I'd take a little bit of time and show you how I use them, and maybe that'll give you some ideas as to how you could put them to use. So what I have up here on the screen right now is I have a blank Notion page. I haven't preset it up as a table or anything else because I'm going to do an inline one. Uh, you don't have to do it as an inline one. You can certainly do it as its own standalone table functionality works the exact same. So let's look at it from the concept first. In understanding groups and subgroups, I like to think of things as a matrix. You've got the groupings, which translate to, in the layout I'm going to show you, into the columns within the structure. So if we think about it as a process, we may have something that's a new item. We have something that's in progress, uh, maybe under review, and then finally completed. Now, I use this a lot for my digital media work. And this process segmentation works really well for that because it allows me to move things step by step through those cycles. But when there's a lot of work going on, it's often difficult to keep everything organized within all of these columns. So that's where subgroups really come into play. Because within the concept of subgroups, I start to add things like the projects that they're associated with, or the client the work is associated with, or the engagement, or some larger level categorization that allows me to take a massive number of items and segment them down. So in this particular case, I'm going to call it engagements. Now within the engagements, I don't need to do any other subcategorization. I can, I can add other properties, that's fine. But for our purposes today, this is all we're going to do. So let's get this stuff out of the way. This is one of the things I like. I'm going to cut this out, get rid of that out of the way, and I'm going to create a board view. Now, if you haven't worked with the board views, it's a different conversation, but it's something you should get comfortable with. It is around this idea of a Kanban board where you have cards that you move through a structure. So we're going to create a board view. And the reason why I like to use the board views is they are very friendly to drag and drop work. So if I create a card that's in a particular group, in a particular subgroup, it's very easy to move it to another group and subgroup just by dragging it and dropping it on the screen. So we're going to create a board here and we're going to call this production. So matter of fact, I'll just leave it as groups and subgroups. But you can see automatically the board structures here. I get a completed, I get an in progress, and then I get a not started categorization. I need another one called under review. That's not where I wanted to put it. You have to watch that little plus sign. So we're going to get rid of that one because I just created a card. And I'm going to go over here and actually use the plus sign that creates a new group. And we'll call this under review. All right. Now, what's nice about these is if you click and hold on the headers, you can resort these columns very easily. So now I have not started, in progress, under review, and completed. And I could kick this off right away. I could start creating cards or dragging cards into these columns and just start using using this and it would work extremely well. But I need to go down a layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a property. I'm going to go over here to my three dots, select properties, add a property and call that property engagement. And I'm going to use a choice or a select field rather. And the reason why I'm going to use a select field is for data consistency. I'm a big advocate of data consistency. If you can use something that you just pick from a menu rather than manually keying it in, you will always get more accurate results because you eliminate the concept of typos. So we're going to create the engagement property. I'm going to turn it on so I can work with it and see it. But you'll see later on, I actually go back and turn that off. And I'll explain why when I get to there. So now we have a card here. In the not started column, card one, if I click on the card and it op open it up, we'll say review draft text. Great. I know what status this is. This is, we're going to say, is an in progress item. And you'll notice it automatically in the background jumped over to the next column. 
but I'm going to set it on an engagement called client one or client pro client a project a just to be really specific again one of the really nice things about notion is I don't have to pre-build all of these lists in other systems for lookups to work really well you have to kind of pre-populate them that can require a lot of time and planning and sometimes you know as I'm a big advocate of work less just do it on the fly and then refine as you go so here we've got client a project a create that one we have the engagement identified good there it is client a project a so we're going to take this second card and we're going to do the same thing uh, review graphics but in this time it's going to be client a project B now sometimes people will ask me well why wouldn't I just create two properties I create a property for cl the clients and then a property for the projects I could but for my own purposes here it's just as easy to do one item for both categorizations the lowest common denominator in this case happens to be the project and it's a derivative of the client and the project if I had 20 projects per client and I had a hundred clients I was dealing with maybe I'm working in an agency model then you start to get into a different conversation then you could actually have groups and subgroups based on client and projects and here's the thing nowhere in this is this an either or proposition you can have a view that's client and projects you can have a view of client and status you can have a view of project and status. however the permutations will work best for you so let's go with this client a project B currently in progress and just for the sake of argument I'm going to kick it back to a non-started status now as I showed you earlier I can drag that status around and this as I have it so far could be very useful I could create a filter for a particular client project combination there's a number of different things I can do but in this case I want to use a subgroup so by going under subgroup for the board view it says subgroup by and I'm going to select in this case the engagement and immediately you can see all of these different categorizations are now provided right on the screen client a project a here's the projects that are in status client a project B here's the things that are in status and so on this is why I find this so useful because when I'm working on client a project B and I'm ready to review the graphics it's off and running I don't have to worry about it and it keeps everything very organized I can create a project at any point let's say that I create a new card down here under new engagement uh, review new logo something simple like that and maybe I set this to be a project B okay it's in progress and then I realize that maybe I wasn't totally paying attention and it's not actually project B it's project a that easy so using groups and subgroups can give you an ex exceedingly high level of leverage over the data that you're keeping track of and create all the different views you need on that original data set to really keep control over things so I hope this was helpful this is the type of thing that I know some people struggle with not so much how you do it but why you do it and that's one of the things that Yoix Tech specializes is the why over the how so if you have any questions please respond back in the comments let me know uh, I would be happy to dig into it more with you or explore other ideas until then thanks a lot and work less